The Art of Simplicity is a Puzzle of Great Complexity. That's a quote by Douglas Horton, and I think it applies perfectly for Blender, 3D, and animations in general. Sometimes making a simple scene is what's needed to elevate the entire mood of any presentation or video that you're working on. However, to make this simple scene look good, it often takes a lot of trial and error. So in today's video, we're gonna have a very basic and simple setup and try to figure out how we can make it look amazing. With that, let's go ahead and create today's animation loop. In our default scene, we're gonna go ahead and hide the default cube because we're gonna be using that as the geometry node object in a while. Then we'll press shift date and search for a mesh circle and we're gonna go to the little drop down over here and increase the number of vertices all the way to 256 so that we get a nice smooth subdivided circle. Then we'll press tab to go into edit mode and then we're just going to press F to fill in the entire face. Now we can go ahead and press 7 to go into our top view and select one of these vertices. Let's start with this one and just expand it by pressing G. However, to move all of the vertices around it as well, we're going to tap O to switch on proportional editing and then we can press G Y and just move it just like that. However, I need to expand the number of vertices that are affected by this. So I'll use my scroll wheel to increase the proportional size. Now, once I have it somewhere that I think suits the scene, I'll go ahead and press left click to confirm the movement. Then I'll select the bottommost vertex over here and do the exact same thing. So I'll press G, Y, and I'll make it into some sort of a shape, maybe like this. Again, because this is an abstract animation, the shapes can be whatever you think suits your requirements. Once I'm done with that, I'll go ahead and select these two opposite vertices over here. And then I'll just go ahead and press G followed by Z to lift it up to something like that. Now, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just repeat that action with a smaller proportional size. So again, G, Z, bring down the proportional size and lift it up just a little bit more. So I think that looks good. However, that creates a sharp seam right here. So let's select this, switch off proportional editing and then press G, Z and lift it up just like that. And the sharp seam is gone. However, because this face right now doesn't have too much geometry, it becomes fairly flat right over there. To help fix that, we'll just add in a few more edges by going to seven and then pressing K to get our knife tool. Now we'll just bring it there, select, move down to the absolute bottom, and then select again and press enter to select that. Now that way you see, we fix the topology by a little bit. Of course, this is still fairly bad topology, but we're trying to keep it as simple as we can. So I'll do the exact same thing again, horizontally, press K to get my knife tool, select one vertex, go all the way to the opposite edge, and then just select and enter. So that fixes up my topology a bit, at least to the amount that I wanted it to be fixed. So I can go back to object mode. Now I'll add in a few modifiers to make this look a bit better. So we'll go to the modifier properties. We'll click add modifier and we'll just search for the solidify modifier to actually give it some thickness. Let's increase the thickness up to maybe something like 0.05 and then we'll add in a bevel modifier to round and off the edges quite a bit. So let's just go ahead and reduce this amount till we have just the edges being rounded off. So I think something like this looks good enough. Let's increase the number of segments quite a bit. So I'll go with maybe a value of five and I think that looks good. Of course, I can always click object, shade smooth to make it nice and smooth. Now, in case you're seeing some sort of an issue in this region, you can always tab back into edit mode and just move all of these pieces around by just tiny bits until you actually fix all of the issues. So I think that makes all of the issues go away and that looks perfect in my opinion. Now that we have this shape, I want to set the origin to this absolute tip. And to do that, I'll just press tab and go into edit mode again, select the vertex over there and then press shift S and choose cursor to select it. Now I can go back into object mode and I can click object set origin to 3D cursor. That way the origin shifts right there and I can now use this in my geometry node. So let's go ahead and hide the circle for now and unhide the cube which is going to act as my geometry node object. Let's click on add modifier and search for the geometry node modifier and then press this new button to create a new geometry node tree. To actually get the geometry node editor, we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows. We'll click and drag to create a new window and we'll switch this to the geometry node editor workspace. Now we'll zoom in, we'll select the group input and tap X to delete it. I want this particular circle to be created on which we'll add in those leaf-like shapes that we just created. So I'll press shift A and search for a circle. Now you could use a mesh circle or a curved circle. It'll result in the exact same animation, but for now I'll use a curved circle and plug that into the group output. I want this to be rotated about the X axis. So I'll press shift A and search for a transform geometry. I can plug that in and just rotate it about the X by 90 degrees and that works perfectly all right. Now I will be changing the resolution, but before I change the resolution, I'll go ahead and actually add in the circles that we created. 
So let's press Shift A and search for a curve to points node. And the reason why we're using a curve to points node is so that we can dynamically change the count as well as get the rotation without having to align any normals or anything like that. Let's search for an instance on points node, plug that in after the curves to points, and then search for the actual instance object. So you could search for an object info node and simply select the circle from this drop down over here. Now let's plug the geometry into the instance and you see the rotations are all incorrect. So we can just take the rotation from here and plug that into the rotation and that fixes it. However, I still want it to be rotated slightly differently. So instead of playing around with this, I'll just unhide my circle, select it, press tab to go into edit mode, tap A to select everything and then press R followed by Y or X and then just rotate everything, but it's rotating about its center of mass. To make it rotate about 3D cursor, we can just change this pivot point to the 3D cursor and then press RX and rotate it till we get what we wanted. So I think I want this to be rotated by 90 degrees like this, followed by a rotation about the Z axis by 90 degrees. So that looks a lot more like what I wanted. So I think I'll keep it just like this for now. Now, since I don't require the circle anymore, I'll go back to object mode and hide it for the time being. Then again, with this object selected and the geometry node modifier selected, I can go ahead and increase the resolution over here all the way to something like maybe 256. And then I can start increasing this curve to points points till we get the desired number of leaflets. So I think I'll go with maybe a value of 50 for the time being. And I might play around with this even more in a while. Now that we have this selected, I want to be able to rotate this over time. So I'll duplicate this transform geometry node by pressing shift D. And to reset all the values, I'll just press the backspace and it all becomes zeros. Then let's plug that in over here. And if I just rotate about the Y axis, I get this sort of a rotation when I rotate it in the negative direction. So I'm going to keep this at zero and I'll keyframe the values by setting all of my animation defaults. So let's go to the output properties, change the resolution to 200 so that it becomes 4K. Frame rate is going to be 60 frames per second. End frame, I'm going to choose maybe 300 so that it's a five second long loop. Then I'll change the output folder to wherever I want to store it. File format, I'm going to choose FFmpeg video with the encoding changed from Matroska to MPEG4 and the output quality as perceptually lossless. Then I'll go ahead and expand my timeline a little bit. I'll press the back arrow to go to frame zero and I'll hover over the rotation and I'll tap I. Then I'll go all the way to the last frame and then rotate the Y by any multiple of 360 divided by the number of leaflets that there are. So there are 50, so I can directly say 360 divided by 50 and that gives me 7.2. So now I can do 7.2 into any number. So I'll say 7.2 star. Let's go with maybe three rotations or like three leaf movements every loop. So I'll just type 72 into three or 7.2 into three, which gives me 21.6 degrees. Then I'll tap I and I'll come down here, press T and choose linear with both the keyframes selected. So now when I play it, it should loop perfectly and it should be fairly slow, which is exactly what I want. However, it's going in the wrong direction. So I'll make this minus 21.6 and then I'll tap I and now it should be rotating in the correct direction at the correct speed. And I think that looks great. Now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and deal with the materials. So for the materials, I'll press Shift A, search for a set material, and I'll plug that in after the transform geometry and choose the material over here. Then I'll switch over to the shader editor and to actually see the materials, we'll switch our viewport shading to rendered, we'll switch off overlays, we'll go to our world background and we'll just make it very, very dark, although not completely black. And I want the world to actually have a slightly bluish hue. So I'm gonna give it that slightly bluish hue. Then I'll go to my render properties, switch on bloom and screen space reflections. And all the way down for the color management, I'll change it from filmic to AGX. Now for the material, I'll make the base color again, just a little bit bluish, something like that should be good. I'll make it metallic and I'll keep the roughness at 0.5 itself. Then I'll press Shift A and search for a light or I'll select the default light and press Alt G to clear its location. Then I'll press G Z to bring it down a bit and G Y to bring it in front just like that. Then you can place it howsoever you please. But I think I'll go with something like that. And I don't want everything to be lit up just like this. So to play around with that, I'll go to my object data properties or my light properties and I'll choose custom distance. Here I can limit the distance and I'll just change that down to three meters. And now we have a really bright light that affects only three meters around it. Anything else becomes dark. So let's just press G and bring it into someplace like that. I also want it to be much softer. So I'll increase the radius to three meters as well. So I think that looks really cool 
and it gives a slightly different feeling to this sort of a setup. Let's go ahead and add in some sort of a plane for everything to reflect on. So I'll press Shift A and search for a mesh plane and I'll press G Z to just bring it down like that. And I'll press S to scale it up. Now I don't want the pivot point to be the 3D cursor. So I'll change it to individual origins and I'll press S followed by 100 to make it very nice and large. Then I'll go ahead and give it a new material by going to the material properties, pressing this plus button to create a new material. I'll make it completely metallic and I'll reduce the roughness to maybe 0.2. Now I don't want this really sharp light to be present on this reflection. So I'll go ahead and take this plane and lift it up so that it's very close to my actual object. Then I'll select the light and I'll press G Z and I'll just lift it up and move it around till I get something that I like. So I think that actually looks pretty cool. Let's keep it just like that. And I need to start placing my camera. So let's select it. Press Alt G to clear its location. Alt R to clear its rotation. Followed by R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then I'll press G Y to just bring it back a little bit. And I'll press zero to go into my camera view. I'll press R Z 180 to point it to the object and then I'll press G and I'll move it down to some place just like that. Now in my camera properties, I'll go to viewport display, increase pass power two all the way to one, bring this down so that I can see everything a lot better and I'll just place it somewhere like that. Now let's take the plane and move it down a little bit more and that looks great. Let's just increase piece the reflectivity by reducing the roughness down to maybe 0.1 and now I want some light to come from the back as well so I'll select this light press shift D to duplicate it and I'll bring it down to see where the light is I'll just switch on overlays it's right there now I'll press G Y and I'll bring it to the back just like that I'll reduce the power down to something like 50 and maybe the custom distance I can reduce down to one meter now let's just play around with its position until I get some nice soft lighting from the back that looks pretty good maybe reduce or increase this off to 100 and move it to somewhere like that. That looks great. Let's increase this to two meters, 1.5. So I think that looks good. Again, there might be quite a lot of changes that I make just before rendering, but it's up to you to play around with this. It's a very simple setup and I think you can come up with really amazing looks. You could maybe reduce the roughness of the object as well. Maybe I'll go with a value of 0.35 and that looks good for now. The next thing that I want to do is create something in the background. So let's just select this cube again, press shift D to create a duplicate, bring it down to something like that. Let's scale it down as well, or let's just move it back on the Y axis and move it on the X axis to bring it in, scale it down. So yes, I think something like that looks good. You can play around with where you want this to be, but to lift this up to a whole other dimension, all you have to do is switch on the depth of field. So let's go to my camera properties, switch on depth of field, expand this, and I'm going to reduce the f-stop all the way down to 0.1. That makes it really blurred. And now I can just start decreasing the focus distance until I have something in focus. So I think something like that looks good. I need this back region to also be lit. So let's select the light, press shift D to duplicate it again, and then just switch this on, press G Y to move it back. And if you want to position everything properly, you can always go out of the camera view and position it accordingly. Let's go back into my camera view, press G to bring it in like that. And I think that looks great. I think it's too far out of focus. So let's select it as well as the light and press G Y to just bring it closer to maybe something like that. Now I feel like all of these lights should also have a little bit of a bluish tint. Let's just give it this nice bluish tint. Let's do that for all the lights. Maybe they could be slightly different tints of blue as well. And that looks great. Even my floor plane, I'll make it a lot more blue or I'll just leave that as is. Maybe make the world background a bit bluer. To get these shadows nice and soft, you can always go and expand the shadows menu and change the cube size to 4096 for both the cube size and this cascade size. And that's actually all there is to create a very simple abstract animation just like this. You can go ahead and just render out an image or else render out the entire animation. But I prefer rendering out a single image to make sure that everything looks nice before you render the animation. I really hope this was a useful tutorial and you learned something from it. I will post videos as soon as I possibly can every single day if possible. If you want this particular file as well as all of the previous Blender files that I have been creating since 2023, you can go and check that out on Patreon as of now. If you want to buy only this specific file, you can get just this file as an individual product and not a subscription as well. If you have any questions, comments or queries, let me know down below and I'll do my best to try and answer as many of them. And until my next video comes out, don't forget to check out other videos on my channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.